Boom. And welcome back to another episode of Seminole Sideline 365. Once again, I am your host, KB, and this is a segment calling Seminole Snapshots. We're going to do it in another 10 minutes, give you up-to-the-minute news, rumors, notes, uh, what's going on with Seminole's, uh, Seminole's football and sports. Uh, so a couple of things that I want to go over tonight. It is uh, March March? What what the hell is wrong with me? It is May, May the 3rd, <laughs> 2023. Uh, a couple of news and notes to go over this weekend. So uh, it was confirmed tonight by a couple of different sources that Florida State's going to have some big-time portal visitors. As you guys have been following, uh, probably like all of us, uh, Florida State's lost a couple of receivers to the portal, you know, early, way earlier last year. Uh, we lost Malik McLean, who I personally like, and I, I wish we could have kept because I think he could have emerged as a receiver down the road. Uh, and he showed some flashes here and there in, in certain games. Uh, you lost him. I believe he went to Penn State, uh, which I think uh, he'll have a good chance to, uh, to thrive there. Uh, and then you also lost Mike, Micah Pittman earlier last week. So you're getting a little bit thinner at that position, but you also do have a good amount of depth there. But I think Florida State's in a position where they could add the right playmaker to put this offense over the top. Um, and that playmaker has emerged in the name of Keon Coleman at Michigan State. Uh, this is a kid that has two plus years of uh, eligibility left. And it looks like that they have confirmed him for a visit this weekend. So they have confirmed now him. And the kid out of UAB, the defensive back out of UAB, who is another guy that we had discussed earlier this uh, this week. Uh, his name is uh, Jalen Key, another guy that is high, high on the board that guys we need to sign. And that's based on guys that we've lost. You know, losing Marion Cooper, it, it was a big rotational experience loss. Um, and then you lost, uh, you know, you've lost some other guys to, to uh, departures there. You, you just need some solid depth. And this is a guy, Jalen Key specifically, that I think is the right fit because he is a guy that brings experience, brings playmaking ability. He's shown that in the Conference USA. And this is a kid that is looking to come up to the next level, right? He's not looking to go to Colorado or a smaller program and, and compete for time. He he's He's a guy that's shown what he can do. And he wants to go and compete for something, right? And show it on the biggest stage possible. And that's something that Florida State can provide for him. And the good thing is, is he played a good B. He's from Tallahassee. They have a weight in there, but they're going to have to compete for his services with some big time programs. And they made his top six earlier in the week. Um, so they're going to have to compete with Alabama and Ohio State for this guy's services, right? This is what Florida State, this is the position Florida State's in right now, that they have to compete with the top programs for guys like this in the portal right now. The other guy I just mentioned is, is Keon Coleman with another guy that they're going to have to compete for the services in. Uh, see, Keon Coleman is the guy that just emerged this past year. He was a highly talented recruit out of Louisiana a couple of years ago, someone who Florida State tried to get on campus but couldn't uh, because of COVID. And this is during Mike Norvell's first year, which you know put Mike Norvell behind the eight ball in terms of high school recruiting because you couldn't go and see anybody. It was hard to get guys on campus because of COVID restrictions. Uh, and this is one of the guys that he he saw and wanted to get on campus and, and heavily recruited, uh, but due to, due to the circumstances, could not get him on campus. And by the time they they they, they created the relationship, but it just wasn't enough uh, before he signed with Michigan State. The interesting part about him is that he came to Michigan State. They sold him on the offer of being a dual sport athlete. You know, this was a, a, a pretty talented basketball player Obviously, Michigan State has a pretty, pretty uh, high, a highly talented basketball team as well. Um, and, and Mel Tucker and the staff at Michigan State was developing a, a, a powerful po football program, right? That's why they got the big extension there. Now, Michigan State's fallen on harder times a little bit recently. Um, but Keon Coleman sold on being a dual sport athlete. Now, he got to play six games or so with, with the basketball team with Tom Izzo and the legendary coach there. Um, got to play a little bit in the spring semester, as reported by other FS media outlets. Um, but he just really didn't get the, the playing time there. And they decide as a group that he should focus on football solely. And you saw that come to fruition this past year uh, when uh, Keon really exploded. Yeah, as you can see here, 848 yards this past season on 65 receptions, uh, his long being of 51 yards. Uh, the guy was a, a playmaker. Eight touchdowns last year. Um, production on the level of a Johnny Wilson for us, right? So that's what you're seeing. This guy's emerging in year two, his true, I think his true sophomore year, emerging on the field, right? Um, and, and this wasn't a overly talented Michigan State team, I wouldn't say. I don't I don't think they had an above average quarterback uh, that he was dealing with. And I think the interesting part was he had big games against really good competition. 
So if you're looking at here on the screen, you can see he had 116 yards against Washington, who was a who was a pretty good team last year, top 25 team last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, then you had 79 yards against Wisconsin, uh, two touchdowns there, two touchdowns against Washington. Uh, you had 155 yards on five receptions uh, and one touchdown against Michigan. Uh, even even albeit in a loss. Uh, and then you had uh, against Indiana, 107, Penn State, 91, 8 for 91. Uh, his worst game being against Ohio State, I'll give him that. Ohio State's a really good team, uh, and, and the offense just couldn't get it going that day. Um, but albeit, you can see he, he shows up in big moments, right, uh, against some quality teams in the Big Ten. And I'm not gonna, I'm not saying the ACC ACC competition is not going to be much better than that, right? Against you know the uh, you know in some of the other conference you play against Washington and then Michigan, uh, Penn State, um, the competition of the Big Ten and ACC is comparable. ACC maybe a little bit less less so, right? Uh, so I think this is a guy that really obviously is high on the radar for Florida State when they saw him emerge because one they have a relationship with him. Right. Norvell had a verbal kind of relationship building with him before they could not get him on campus. And two, he, he's in Louisiana. Right. Florida State has built sort of a recruiting bed in Louisiana. And now Brian Kelly's come in and started to, to regenerate things there for LSU and stuff like that. But he has a couple of advantages in this recruitment for uh, Keon Coleman, in, in my in my estimation. One is. Florida State in that region, in the South, if Keon Coleman wants to come home in the Louisiana, in the South, Florida State has the most established quarterback that's going to be able to throw to him. Think about it. Jaden Daniels, they don't even know if he's going to be the starter for LSU Just come week one. There's still debate on, on which quarterback's going to play for week one against Florida State. That, that's number one. Number two is program stability. Brian Kelly's still rebuilding that program. They had they you know they did a hell of a job getting to the SEC championship um, and rebuilding that. But they're still rebuilding. They're still trying to find their identity. They're still trying to find their quarterback. I mean, Florida's a mess. Uh, you know, by all regards, Miami's a mess by all regards. Those Southern programs that are around LSU, Tulane's probably a better you know maybe a good situation for him. That's a good program, but that's a small school, and, and I know they're going to recruit him hard in the state of Louisiana. But it, it, really, when you're talking about programs in the South, he has the opportunity to come and play with Jordan Travis, who showed that with a big body receiver like a Johnny Wilson, who Keon Coleman is very similar in stature wise, 6'4, 215. Look what you can do, right? Johnny Wilson put up almost a thousand yards playing a very similar style. And Keon's a guy that can stretch the field too, right? He, he, he high points the ball. And that's something Johnny Wilson's getting better and better at. But Keon could come in hook up with Jordan Wilson or uh, Jordan Travis and you would have, I, I don't know, air superiority every single game. You put both those guys on the field. I don't know who's, who's going to be allowed to jump them. Who, who's going to be able to stop those guys. There's not quarterbacks big enough. Safety's big enough who can cover these two. I think that's all you have to sell to them. Keon, we're going to be throwing the ball around. If you're on the field, right? You're going to have the opportunities to make big plays. It may not be a thousand yards receiving, but you're going to be uh, have the opportunity to have eight or ten touchdowns and show your physicality in the end zone, just like Johnny Wilson did. That's what I would be selling to him. There's going to be plenty of weapons on the field this year with Jaheim Bell and everyone they brought in, the tight ends, the receivers they have coming back, that you're going to have your opportunity to get your one-on-one matchups. They're not going to be able to double-team or, or, or be able to zone people off. You're going to have your one-on-one opportunities in this offense. So I think Florida State has a has – a, Pretty good opportunity to sign this guy. The only drawback would be that they do have a loaded room, right? You guys got like Kentron, Darian Williamson. Uh, like I said, Johnny Wills. You have established weapons there. And then you have our tight end group that, that's now bolstered up as well. So Keon may say there's too many weapons in this offense, right? How am I going to be able to shine in it? So it, it's really up to him. Does Keon want to come in and be coming to a program that's going to be competing for 10, 11 wins next year and then be part of that offense and be able to shine within it? Maybe a, be a little bit overshadowed, be not the number one prime, number one receiver in it, but maybe the number two, and maybe emerge, maybe overshadow Johnny. It, it could be, but he's going to be the number one, number two, probably in this offense. Um, is he okay with that, or does he want to go to like a two lane or, or some other, you know, kind of emerging program and be the key guy and still win eight or nine games within that program? It's really up to him because he'll have his choice of program. I believe at this point. The third thing to think about is. Does he still want to play basketball? Like I, I know he stopped playing in the spring semester after the spring semester. Really little game log at a high level, but look at Florida State's basketball program right now. It's a dumpster fire. 
they have scholarships available that I'm aware of. Could they not offer him a preferred walk-on role, potentially a scholarship to secure his services, right, for two-plus years? If I'm if I'm the AD and I'm Lambert Hamilton, sign the kid up. If that's what he's in, if he wants to go back to dual sport, if that's what his passion is, and you can get him to play football at Florida State by doing that, sign me up. Because the basketball program does not seem to be a priority to the AD or the NIL organizations at Florida State, from what I've seen. And coming off a nine-win season, you take this kid all day, right? Take him all day. See what he's got. Either give him a PUW, uh, you know, preferred walk-on title, or even a scholarship for a season and see how it goes. That's what I would offer. I think Florida State's in the in the position to be able to do that, playing in the ACC, right? Guys like Leonard Hamilton, I think Keon would get along with Leonard Hamilton, similar to Tom Izzo. Uh, that's what I would offer as well, right? I, I think potentially if he's still into playing basketball, give him that opportunity. So I think that's interesting. So you get both Keon Coleman uh, and, and Key on campus this weekend. Um, the one guy that's interesting that has not been offered yet, to my knowledge, to my knowledge has not been offered yet, and we talked about him uh, a week or two ago, was Zachary Franklin, uh, the, another receiver. This guy's got over 3,000 yards uh, of offense while at UTSA. He's, he's got one more year left. He's transferring uh, as a graduate transfer. But should Florida State be entertaining his services, right? Should they have a backup plan in terms of if Keon Coleman des- decides not to come to Florida State, right? Do they, I mean, do you guys believe, you know, let me know in the comments. Do you think that's Keon Coleman or nothing at all? Like, are we fine if we don't get him and we trust what we have in the room with Kentron and, and, and company? Or do you think that we need to be putting in backup calls to guys like, Zakari, Franklin, and there's a bunch of other receivers that 24-7 points out. Like the receiver depth at the portal graduate transfer level is pretty high. There's there's still some good guys left. The guy from Colorado, as you see here, um, uh, there are a couple of receivers from Colorado. Uh, but you got guys like Keon Coleman, like we talked about, uh, and Jordan Hudson from TCU. But this guy stood out to me as proving production, even though at the Conference USA level, Still a lot of yards and a big body, right? I think he's 6'2", another big body receiver who, who plays and uses his size well. I'm kind of surprised that I haven't heard about an offer or trying to get him on campus just to feel it out. Um, so kind of interesting that we haven't heard about that. So I would love to hear from you. Who do you think we need to land this weekend? Do we need to land both key? I, I definitely think we need to land key, minimal. Receiver is a nice to have at this point, I believe. I believe you have to land. Uh, you have to land the uh, Jalen Key from a- UAB. We need more depth at at the defensive back position, and we need talented, experienced depth at that position. Based on losing who we've lost, right? I, it's just in case of injury, just in case of talent drop off or lack of progression from a Dent Dent uh, and, and Shaheem and Kate. You know, this, Shaheem's still a young guy. We still got we got a lot of freshmen in those defensive back positions too that are coming in. I, we need some more veteran presence in that room, and we need, the kid from uh, UAB will bring that. I think it's a nice to have if you get Keon Coleman in the room. That's that's a nice to have. That will solidify this offense as the top in the ACC in my book. If you get Keon Coleman, you have the top air offense, and I think the run offense in the ACC in my eyes. If you if you land Keon Coleman, that's my opinion, right? Uh, let me know if you would agree with me on that. Uh, and then finally, that's it. That's it. Do you do you do you do you think we should be? Who else do you think we should be scouting at? Right. I haven't heard of uh, any defensive linemen. You know stuff like that. Um, defensive ends, linebackers that we're reaching out to. We have five scholarships available up to this point. I think we're at eighty scholarships from what uh, Knowles Game Day and other media sites have reported. We're at eighty scholarships, so we have five to be flexible with. Right now, that doesn't mean there's some graduate transfers on Florida State that could leave. Right, some veteran guys. But we have five to play with. So we're looking at maybe two spots right now for, for the guy from UAB and Keon Coleman. What other three do you think we should spend on? Let me know in the comments. But I think first you get uh, Key from UAB, solidify your TV position. And then Coleman, if you get him, that's just icy on the cake. Let me know in the chat. Let's see how it goes this weekend. And if we get breaking news, we'll report it. All right. Take care, y'all. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, enjoy your uh, Thursday.